so very good morning everyone so let us uh, revise with the topics what we have discussed in the last class so microcontrollers 18 ec 46 okay so in this class today we will do revision on the topics of scon registers and db9 connector pins serial communication ports okay so with the continuation of rs232 let us discuss about db9 pin connections as the name itself indicates db9 that means it will be having nine terminals or nine pins this is a diagram how it's going to be indicated that is pictorial representation of db9 connectors so one two three four five that is in upper row we have five pins in lower row we have four pins so the first one is indicated as one which is nothing but data carrier detect so second one is nothing but receiver data and third one it is nothing but transmitting data that is txt the fourth one is nothing but data terminal ready that is dtr the fifth one is signal ground that means ground pin again sixth one is nothing but data set ready and seventh one is nothing but request to send eighth one is clear to send and ninth one is ring indicator which is indicated as ri this rs232 supports both db25 and db9 pin connectors but we most for commonly use db9 pins much and this is a representation and pictorial representation of db9 pin connectors so and shaking in eight that is rs232 the current terminology classifies the data communication equipment as dte and dce dt is nothing but data terminal equipment refers to terminal and computer that send and receive the data data communication equipment refers to communication equipment such as modems the simplest communication between a pc and microcontroller requires a minimum three pins that is txt rxt and ground so that means a simplest communication where the connection between pc and uh, microcontroller it requires only three pins that is txt rxt and ground dte that is data terminal equipment dte this is another data terminal equipment transmitter to receiver transmitter to receiver and this is wrong this is the simplest communication okay and checking signal in rs232 dt dtr data terminal ready when the terminal is turned on it sends out the signal dtr to indicate that it is ready for communication okay that means it is turned on it will indicate that it is ready for communication dsr data set ready when it is turned on and has gone through the set self test it asserts dcr to indicate that it is ready for communication okay it is on means it is going to make a self test and it is also asserting dcr to indicate it is ready for communication so next okay request to send when dte device has byte to transmit it asserts rts to signal the modem that it has a byte of data to transmit okay and cts clear to send when the modem has a room for storing a data it is to receive it sends out the signal cts to dte to indicate that it can receive the data now okay it will indicate the dte that it is ready to date receive the data at right okay next dcd the modem asserts the signal dcd to inform the dte that it validates carrier has been detected and that contact between it and other modem is established ri is nothing but ring indicator the output of the modem and an input of the pc indicator that the telephone is ringing it goes on and off synchronous with ringing sound as a simple as like your telephone next txd and rxd this is the simplest form of receiver and transmitter transmitting and receiver in 8051 it has a two pins that are used specifically for transmitting and receiving the data serially these two pins are called txd and rxd and are a part of port 3 that is p30 and p31 these pins are ttl compatible therefore they are require a single line drivers to make them rs232 compatible we need a line driver that is voltage converter to convert rs232 signal to ttl voltage level 
that will be acceptable to 8051 txt and rxt pins 8051 p31 and p30 max 232 so here as in the diagram it has been shown pictorically that is 8051 when it is connecting to db9 connector it has to go through with max 232 as we already discussed it requires a converter that is level converter here the max 232 will act as a level converter in between db9 connector that is rs232 and 8051 okay pc board rate the pc compatible com port that is pc compatible computer premium that is pentium microprocessor normally have two com ports both ports have rs232 type connectors the com ports are designated as com1 and com port and replaceable by usb ports to allow the data transfer between the PC and an 8051 system without any error, we must make sure that the baud rate of 8051 system matches the baud rate of PC. Okay, this is a very important point. So, if you want to communicate with PC and 8051 without any distortion or error, the baud rate should be maintained such that it has to match. The baud rate supported by IBM PCs are 19,200, 9,600, 4,800, 2,400. 1200, 600, 300, 150 and 110. How to set up a baud rate in 8051? The baud rate in 8051 uh, is programmable. The relationship, that means we can able to program the baud rate in 8051. The relationship between crystal frequency and baud rate of 8051 is discussed now. The 8051 disc divides the crystal frequency by 12 to get the machine cycle. So we already discussed what is crystal frequency, what is the machine cycle in 8051 and we also know what is the uh, crystal frequency of 8051 that is 11.0592 MHz in module 2. The machine cycle frequency is 921.6. How we are going to get this 11.0592 MHz of crystal oscillator is divided by 12. The machine cycle frequency will be 921.6 MHz and again it is divided by 32 by UART so that we will get 28800 Hz okay so which will be fed to the timer 1 to set the baud rate okay so we know that in 8051 we have two types of timer that is timer 0 and timer 1 next so here this is an example we have for timer 1 must be programmed in mode 2 that is 8 bit and auto reload with a crystal oscillator frequency of 11.0592 MHz find the uh, timer high one value needed to be have a following baud rate th1 means it is of 8 bit and we are giving a baud rate of 9600 2400 and 1200 so when we solve this the machine cycle of the frequency of 8051 we know that it's 11.0592 MHz if you divide it by 12 you'll get 921.6 kilohertz and again if you divide it by 32 you'll get 28600 hertz is a frequency of UART which will be used for serial communication which is given to a timer 1 to set the baud rate now this 28800 uh, 28, hertz is divided by 3 you'll get 9600 which is a required baud rate to be set where minus 3 if you convert it into XR it will be FD and it will be loaded to TX TH1 that is timer high 1 if you divide 28800 by 12 so you will get 2400 where minus 12 is nothing but F4 which is hex which is loaded to TH1 28824 it is nothing but 1200 where minus 24 is nothing but E8X is loaded into TH1 okay next setting up baud rate in 8051 the timer 1 must be programmed in mode 2 that is 8 bit auto reload in this uh, table we will come to know that for a baud rate of 9600 th1 in decimal we have minus 3 in hexadecimal we have fd for this baud rate we have minus 6 and fa for this baud rate minus 12 and f4 for this baud rate we have minus 24 and e8 as you already know, the crystal oscillator frequency is 11.0592 MHz. So, S buff resistor. A byte of data is transferred via a transmitted line, must be placed in S buff resistor. And this S buff is nothing but 
Uh, it is one of the register in 8051 which is used for serial communication. It will hold a byte of data when it is received by the receiver line. Byte of data means 8 bits. It can be accessed like any other registers. Move as buff ash d which will load the 44h that means ASCII value of d to as buff move as buff comma a that means the content of accumulator will be copied into as buff move a comma as buff copy the content of as buff into accumulator these are some of the examples how we can use when a byte is written in as buff it is framed by 8051 with the start and stop it and transferred serially via transferred pin when the bits are received serially via received, it is deframed by 8051 by eliminating the stop and start bits, making a byte of out of data received and then placing it in SBUF. Framing needed not to be done by programming explicitly. Okay. Next. The special function register SBUF is physically two registers. One is write only and it is used hold data to be transmitted out of 8051. The other is read only, holds the received data from external source via RXD. Both mutually exclusive registers have the same address 099H. SBUF is not bit addressable. Okay, so next topic is SCON registers. Okay, so let us stop at this point. Now let us discuss about this in the next class. So SCON, SBUF, these are very important. They may ask you for uh, 4 marks, 5 marks or explain the following like that. And it, these are very important topic. And in uh, lab point of view also in Viva they may ask you this. The structure of SCON and the SBUF register. What is SBUF and how many bits like that. Okay. So it is very important. So let us discuss this in the next class. Let us stop at this point. Then... Uh, SBUF register also we have discussed in the last class it's a kind of register uh, I told here three examples we are given how we are going to represent or use SBUF in our program so SCON register as I told in the last class also SCON and SBUF are very important registers in 8051 in practical point of view in Vivo also it is one of the favorite question SCON is an 8-bit register used for program the start bit stop bit and data bits for the data framing among other times okay and uh, here we have sm0 sm1 sm2 ren tb8 rb8 ti and ri the similar manner sm0 sm1 means serial mode specifier sm2 is also used for multi-process communication and ren is for set or clear the software it is nothing but enable or disable the reception and uh, TB8 is not used in mode 1 and uh, RB8 not used in mode 1 TI means transmit interrupt flag set by the hardware HWS hardware at the beginning of the stop bit mode 1 and cleared by the software SW RI receive interrupt flag set by the hardware at the beginning of the stop bit mode 1 and clear by the software SM0 and SM1 determines the framing of the data by specifying the number of bits per character and the start and stop bits. If SM0 and SM1 is 00, it is treated as mode 0. If it is 01, it is treated as mode 1. If it is 10, it is treated as mode 2. If it is 11, it is treated as mode 3. Next, the serial data transmission mode. So in mode 0 if you consider, in this mode the serial port works like a shift register and data transmission works sim synchronously with the clock frequency that is frequency of clock is divided by 12. The serial data is received and transmitted through receiver. The 8 bit are transmitted or received at a time. The pin transmitting outputs the shift clock pulse of frequency that is uh, frequency of oscillator divided by 12 which is connected to external circuitry for synchronization the shift frequency or the baud rate is always 1 by 12 of the oscillator frequency next in mode 1 in mode 1 what happens the serial port functions as a standard UART that is universal asynchronous receivers transmitter it is of a 10 bits which are transmitted through receiver and received through 
receiver that is TXD received transmitted RXD received that 10 bits consisting of one trans that is start bits which is usually a zero eight bit of data and LSB is sent first we already discussed all this in the previous slides also and uh, stop bit which is usually one which is a received at last once received the stop bit goes into RB8 in a spe special function register that is called SCON and special function register is called as SF okay the border it is available variable next in mode 2 in this mode the 11 bits are transmitted through transmitter and received through receiver the various bits are follows a, a start bit with 0 a 8 bit data the LSB is first the programmable line that is TB8 or RB8 bit and a stop bit usually 1 while transmitting a 9 data bits TB8 in SCON can be assigned the value 0 or 1 for example if the information of the parity is to be transmitted the parity bit P in PSW could be moved into TB8 on reception of the data the ninth bit goes into RB8 in SCON while the stop bit is ignored the baud rate is programmable to either 1 by 32 or 1 by 34 64 for the oscillator frequency and this is the formula for which we are going to use frequency in bards is equal to 2 to the power of s mod divided by 64 into frequency of oscillations next in mode 3 in mode 3 what happens in this mode 11 bits are transmitted through transmitter and received through receiver the various bits are a start bit usually is 0 as we discussed in the previous slides also 8 bit data and LSP is first that is least significant bit a programmable ninth bit and a stop bit usually 1 so always kindly remember start bit will be always 0 stop bit will be always treated as 1 that means logical 1 logical 0 mode 3 is same as mode 2 except the fact that the baud rate in the mode 3 is variable that is just as in mode 1 mode 3 is same as mode 2 except the fact that the baud rate in the mode 3 is variable that is just as in mode 1 so frequency in batch is equal to 2 to the power of s mod divided by 32 into frequency of oscillation divided by 12 into 256 minus timer high 1 that is timer 1 high it is of 8 bit so this is a formula this baud rate holds when the timer 1 is programmed in mode 2 next ti and ri flags so here in this slide we are going to discuss the working of transmit interrupt flag and receive interrupt flag so let us consider ti flag so when 8051 finishes the transfer of 8 bit character it raises the ti flag to indicate that it is ready to transfer another byte that means once the data is transmitted that is of 8 bit character the ri flags will become one or it will set it will indicate as set to indicate that it is ready for next byte transfer ri bit is raised at the beginning of the stop bit okay because why stop bit means stop it is the last bit of the previous data such that it is already transmitted after that only the ti flag is going to rise or it is indicated as logic one receive interrupt so when 8051 receives a data serially via rxt it places the byte in sbuf register then rises the ri flag bit to indicate that a byte has been received and should be picked up before it is lost okay when 8051 receives a data serially by receiver it places the byte in sbuf register then rises the ri flag bit to indicate that a byte has been received and should be picked up before it is lost RI is raised half away through the stop okay so next programming the 8051 to transfer the character byte serially how we are going to program 8051 to transfer a character byte serially so these are the steps first tmod register is loaded with a value of 20h indicating the use of timer 1 in mode 2 8 bit auto reload to set the baud rate 
so this indicates that why we are loading the value of 20h it indicates the use of timer 1 in mode 2 it is of 8 bit auto reload to set the baud rate next timer high 1 is loaded with one of the value to set the baud rate for serial data transfer and the scon register is loaded with a value that is 50h which indicates that serial mode 1 where the 8 bit data is framed with start and stop bits next tr1 is set to 1 to start the timer 1 ti is cleared by clear ti instruction so how we are going to clear or make zero of ti is by clear instruction the character byte is to be transferred serially is written into sbuff register the ti flag bit is monitored with the use of instruction that is j and b t i access to see if the character has been transferred completely to transfer the next byte go to the step number 5 and again you have to clear the ti flag instruction again the character byte has to be transferred serially in a written to s buff register again you have to repeat uh, 7 and repeat 8 that's how it actually works next steps that 8051 goes through in transmitting a character y transmitter that is txt so again step by step the byte character to be transmitted is written into the s buff register the start bit is transferred first the 8 bit character is transferred on a bit at the time the stop bit is transferred it is it is during the transfer of the stop bit the 8051 rises the ti flag i already told once the stop bit is received to the 8051 it indicates that the previous data is already completely successfully transmitted and it is ready the ti flag is ready for transmitting the next character which indicates that the last character was transmitted by monitoring the ti flag we can make sure that we are not overloading the s buff okay because ti flag is raised only when the previous data has been transmitted so that is the reason we cannot we are not overloading the s buff if you write another byte into s buff before ti is raised the untransmitted portion of the previous byte will be lost so that is the reason the we have to wait till the ti flag is right then only we have to load the data to the s buff after s buff is loaded with a new byte the ti flag bit must be forced to zero by clear ti in order to for this the new byte has to be transmitted that means once the data has been transmitted ti flag is raised after tr flag is raised a new uh, character is had to be loaded to s buff during that time we have to clear the ti flag to make the new transfer of new byte next importance of ti flag by checking the ti flag bit we know whether or not the 8051 is ready for transfer another byte you will agree with this so it is a very important point by checking the status of ri flag we will come to know that whether or not 8051 is ready to transfer another byte of data Okay. if we write a byte into s buff before the ti flag bit it is raised we risk the loss of portion of byte being transferred as i told already if we write a byte of data into s buff before ti flag is raised so we are going to risk a portion of data which we are going to lose okay so it is also very important so that means if you don't want to lose any portion of data we need to wait till the status of RF uh, that is TI flag has to be raised next how to program 8051 to receive the character bytes serially these are the steps we need to follow first one is T mode register is loaded with a value of 20h indicating the use of timer 1 in mode 2 8 bit auto reload to set the baud rate okay the th1 is loaded with one of the value to set the baud rate for serial data transfer the scon register is loaded with a value that is 50h indicating serial mode 1 where an 8 bit data is framed with start and stop bits next the tr1 is set to 1 to start the timer 1 and ri is cleared by clear ri instruction so here again the ri flag will be cleared by using clear flag and the ri flag bit is monitored with the use of instruction that is jnb jump if not borrow and 
access to see if the entire character has been received yet. Okay. When RI is raised, SBuff has a byte, its content or moved into the safe place. To transfer the next byte, go to the step number 5. Again, it will start by clearing RI. It will check the status of RI flag. Again, RI flag will be raised after the transfer. SBuff will be loaded with a byte of data which will be moved into safe place. Again, next byte will be transferred. Okay, like this, it's going to work. So, let us revise the topics what and all we have discussed in this class that is, the SCON registers, the each bits of SCON registers, and the operation of SBUF registers that is serial communication. So, let us briefly revise what and all we have discussed today. Okay, so with the continuation of RS232, let us discuss about DB9 pin connections. As the name itself indicates, DB9, that means it will be having 9 terminals or 9 pins. This is a diagram, how it's going to be indicated. That is pictorial representation of DB9 connectors. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is in upper row, we have 5 pins. In lower row, we have 4 pins. So, the first one is indicated as 1, which is nothing but data carrier detect. So, second one is nothing but receiver data. And third one. It is nothing but transmitting data that is txt the fourth one is nothing but data terminal ready that is dtr the fifth one is signal ground that means the ground pin again sixth one is nothing but data set ready and seventh one is nothing but request to send eighth one is clear to send and ninth one is ring indicator which is indicated as ri this RS232 supports both DB25 and DB9 pin connectors but we most uh, commonly use DB9 pins much and this is a representation and pictorial representation of DB9 pin connectors so handshaking in 8 that is RS232 the current terminology classifies the data communication equipment as DTE and DCE DT is nothing but data terminal equipment refers to terminal and computer that send and receive the data. Data communication equipment refers to communication equipment such as modems. The simplest communication between a PC and microcontroller requires a minimum 3 pins that is TXT, RXT and ground. So that means a simplest communication where the connection between PC and uh, microcontroller it requires only three pins that is TXT, RXT and ground DTE that is data terminal equipment DTE this is another data terminal equipment transmitter to receiver transmitter to receiver and this is wrong this is the simplest communication okay and checking signal in RS232 DT, DTR data terminal ready when the terminal is turned on it sends out the signal DTR to indicate that it is ready for communication okay that means it is turned on it will indicate that it is ready for communication DSR data set ready when it is turned on and has gone through the set self test it asserts DCR to indicate that it is ready for communication okay it is on means it is going to make a self test and it is also asserting DCR to indicate it is ready for communication so next okay request to send when DTE device has byte to transmit it asserts RTS to signal the modem that it has a byte of data to transmit okay and CTS clear to send when the modem has a room for storing a data it is to receive it sends out the signal CTS to DTE to indicate that it can receive the data now okay it will indicate the DTE that it is ready to date receive the data at right okay next DCD the modem asserts the signal DCD to inform the DTE that it validates carrier has been detected and that contact between it and other modem is established RI is nothing but ring indicator the output of the modem and an input of the PC indicator that the telephone is ringing it goes on and off synchronous with ringing sound as a simple as like your telephone next TXD and RXD this is the simplest form of receiver and transmitter 
transmitting and receiver in 8051 it has a two pins that are used specifically for transmitting and receiving the data serially these two pins are called txd and rxd and are a part of port 3 that is p30 and p31 these pins are ttl compatible therefore they are require a single line drivers to make them rs232 compatible we need a line driver that is voltage converter to convert rs232 signal to ttl con voltage level that will be acceptable to 8051 txd and rxd pins 8051 p31 and p30 max 232 so here as in the diagram it has been shown pictorically that is 8051 when it is connecting to db9 connector it has to go through with max 232 as we already discussed it requires a converter that is level converter so here the max 232 will act as a level converter in between db9 connector that is rs232 and 8051 okay pc baud rate the pc compatible com port that is pc compatible computer premium that is pentium microprocessor normally have two com ports both ports have rs232 type connectors the com ports are designated as com1 and com port and replaceable by usb ports to allow the data transfer between the pc and an 8051 system without any error we must make sure that the baud rate of 8051 system matches the baud rate of pc okay this is a very important point so if you want to communicate with pc and 8051 without any distortion or error the baud rate should be maintained such that it has to match the baud rate supported by ibm pcs are 19200 9600 4800 2400 1200 600 300 150 and 110 how to set up a baud rate in 8051 the baud rate in 8051 uh, is programmable the relationship that means we can able to program the baud rate in 8051 the relationship between crystal frequency and baud rate of 8051 is discussed now the 8051 disk divides the crystal frequency by 12 to get the machine cycle so we already discussed what is crystal frequency what is the machine cycle in 8051 and we also know what is the uh, crystal frequency of 8051 that is 11.0592 megahertz in module 2 the machine cycle frequency is 921.6 how we are going to get this 11.0592 megahertz of crystal oscillator is divided by 12 the machine cycle frequency will be 921.6 megahertz and again it is divided by 32 by uart so that we will get 28800 hertz okay so which will be fed to the timer 1 to set the baud rate okay so we know that in 8051 we have two types of timer that is timer 0 and timer 1 next so here this is an example we have for timer 1 must be programmed in mode 2 that is 8 bit and auto reload with a crystal oscillator frequency of 11.0592 megahertz find the uh, timer high 1 value needed to be have a following baud rate TH1 means it is of 8 bit and we are giving a baud rate of 9600, 2400 and 1200. So when we solve this the machine cycle of the frequency of 8051 we know that it's 11.0592 MHz. If you divide it by 12 you will get 921.6 kHz and again if you divide it by 32 you will get 28600 Hz is the frequency of UART which will be used for serial communication which is given to a timer 1 to set the baud rate now this 28800 uh, 28, hertz is divided by 3 you will get 9600 which is the required baud rate to be set where minus 3 if you convert it into XR it will be FD and it will be loaded to TX, TH1 that is timer high 1 if you divide 28800 by 12 so you will get 2400 where minus 12 is nothing but f4 which is hex which is loaded to th1 28824 it is nothing but 1200 where minus 24 is nothing but e8x is loaded into th1 okay next setting up baud rate in 8051 the timer one must be programmed in mode 2 that is 8 bit auto reload in this uh, table, we will come to know that for a baud rate of 9600 TH1 in decimal, we have minus 3. In hexadecimal, we have 
fd for this border we have minus 6 and fa for this border at minus 12 and f4 for this border we have minus 24 and e8 as you already know the crystal oscillate frequency is 11.0592 megahertz so s buff resistor a byte of data is transferred via a transmitted line must be placed in s buff register and this s buff is nothing but uh, it is one of the register in 8051 which is used for serial communication it will hold a byte of data when it is received by the receiver line byte of data means 8 bits it can be accessed like any other registers move s buff ash d which will load the 44h that means ascii value of d to s buff move s buff comma a that means the content of accumulator will be copied into s buff move a comma s buff copy the content of s buff into accumulator these are some of the examples how we can use when a byte is written in s buff it is framed by 8051 with a start and stop it and transferred serially via transferred pin when the bits are received serially via received it is deframed by 8051 by eliminating the stop and start bits making a byte of out of data received and then placing it in s buff framing needed not to be done by programming explicitly okay next the special function register s buff is physically two registers one is write only and it is used hold data to be transmitted out of 8051 the other is read only holds the received data from external source via rxt both mutually exclusive registers have the same address 099 h s buff is not bit addressable okay so next topic is s cone registers okay so let us stop at this point now let us discuss about this in the next class so s con s buff these are very important they may ask you for uh, four marks five marks or explain the following like that and it, these are very important topic and in uh, lab point of view also in viva they may ask you this the structure of s con and uh, s buff register what is s buff and how many bits like that okay so it is very important so let us discuss this in the next class let us stop at this point